Hey, Adrian here with your back testing and trading system development tip of the week. And uh, today I want to talk to you about survivorship bias and the worst type of survivorship bias problem that you can have in your trading system development. Um, one of the uh, the most common things that uh, that traders think about when you think about survivorship bias is backtesting on the current set of stocks that are actively listed and worrying about stocks that have been trading in the past but that are delisted and are no longer in your sample set. Um, that's actually the least problematic type of survivorship bias. I want to talk to you about the most problematic survivorship bias, and that is index constituent survivorship bias. So index constituents are the stocks that make up the index. So let's say um, you want to trade stocks in the S&P 500. Right now there's about 500 stocks, surprisingly, in the S&P 500 index. And if you backtest your trading system on the current set of 500 stocks, typically you get a really good result. Now, why do you get a good result? Because the stocks that are currently, as of today, in the S&P 500 index, have grown to become big companies today, and so therefore made it into the index. But the problem is, 30 years ago when you started your back test, and you tested it all the way up to today, those stocks may not have been big companies. But we know because they're currently in the S&P 500 index today, that as of today, they are big companies. So in effect, if you back test on the list of stocks that are currently in the index, then you're pre-selecting at the start of your backtest small companies that are gonna grow massively to become a member of the S&P 500. Think about Amazon, think about Tesla, think about Nvidia, think about all these big com the companies that are massive today that have gone through huge growth phases and are now part of the S&P 500. If you run your backtest assuming that they were always part of the S&P 500, you get amazing results. But the problem is they weren't always part of that S&P 500. And in fact, you're cheating hugely by including them in your backtest. Um, so what you've got to do instead is have uh, historically accurate index constituents for your backtesting. So if you want to test on the um, stocks that are that are in the S&P 500 index, then every day of your backtest for the last 30 years or however long you're backtesting for, you need to validate which list of stocks is currently on that day in the index and only take buy signals or, sh or shorting signals from those stocks. And then the next day, the same thing, revalidate what companies are in the list, which ones are not, and only take signals from those stocks and so on every single day. When you do it that way, you get a very, very different answer, a uh, very different backtest result, because what you're doing is you're avoiding that cheating. You're looking with the knowledge that you would have had at the time, which stocks were in the S&P 500, and making that um, that your universe on that day, and then the universe changes each day when uh, to keep track of what stocks are in the S&P 500 over time. Now, with the S&P 500, you know, a lot of people are sort of aware of this, but there's some other um, ways this can creep in. One thing I noticed this week is uh, someone sent me some system results which looked really good, and I got a bit excited about it, to be honest, um, and then I dug in a little bit further. And what I noticed in their back test is they had used stocks in the All Ordinaries uh, watch list in Norgate Data. And the All Ordinaries sounds like it's all ordinary stocks, but it's not. It's actually an index somewhat similar to the S&P 500 index. It's actually 500 of the biggest stocks in Australia. And if you backtest on the current list of all ordinaries, you are cheating, just like you would be if you backtest on the current list of the S&P 500 stocks. So you need to be very cautious. If you're using anything other than the entire market to backtest your results, you need to be very careful and make sure you're using historically accurate index constituents. Now, where do you get this data from? You get it from Norgate. And uh, below this video, I'll give you a link. Um, you can go and get a trial or, or, or get uh, a subscription to Norgate data. You need the uh, platinum subscription to get the historically accurate index constituents. And that will allow you to backtest on any of the major, um, the constituents of any of the major indices um, <clears throat> for Australia, US or Canada. Now, if you're testing on markets outside Australia, US, and Canada, you're, in, you're out of luck because there are no really good sources other than Norgate for historically accurate index constituents. So if you're back testing on any other markets, Hong Kong, Japan, any of the European markets, and so on, unless you've found yourself a source of 
the historically accurate index constituents, what you should do is backtest over the entire market, all stocks that are currently listed, because that eliminates this um, survivorship bias problem. Of course, you're left with the survivorship bias problem of you're only backtesting stocks that are currently listed, but I've tested and compared um, uh, backtest with currently listed stocks and currently and delisted stocks. And actually that survivorship bias is, is not very much of a problem. The index uh, constituent survivorship bias is a far bigger problem. So you want to avoid that one at all costs. So that's today's uh, trading system development and backtesting tip. Be cautious what list you're backtesting on. And if you're doing anything other than, than the entire market, make sure you're not falling victim to uh, that survivorship bias and you, you should instead be using the historically accurate index constituents. Hope that helps. My name's Adrian Reed. This is Enlightened Stock Trading. And if you want to know more, click one of the links below and uh, I'll see if I can help you out. See you next time. Bye for now.